All righty. Well, I'm going to do a video. I haven't done a video on this car yet. Uh, it's my 2007 um, Crown Vic uh, Police Interceptor. This one was auctioned a few years ago out of Pensacola Police Department. Uh, went to a dealer in Milton, I believe, and my uncle bought it, and then it was passed on to me uh, when he passed away. Nobody else in the family wanted it. I call it Frank and Vicky because uh, it's made up of parts of several different cars. Uh, obviously, had a pretty rough life. Uh, do a quick walk around here. Doing a video here today because uh, there's absolutely nothing else to do, and the whole world is closed down. So pretty good body on this one it had the typical deal with the holes in the hood the roof that i fixed this bumper was pretty shattered um and i've patched it up a little bit uh, put the trailer hitch on haven't done a lot else to this car i'll go through the maintenance and repairs i've done on it um here in a second i'll show the whole car obviously the front bumper is not off of this car this valance here is not off of this car. Those, those intervals that are written on it there are all wrong. They don't match up with the mileage on the car. And this hood is, I don't think it's even a Crown Vic, uh, a Crown Vic hood. I think it's a Grand Marquis hood. So when I got the car, it had the police tires on it. They were very hard. They had uh, still quite a bit of wear left on them, thread left on them, but they were very, very hard. Uh, so the first thing I did was got rid of those and that made a huge difference. I wasn't going to really keep this car, but it ended up turning to be such a nice driving and good condition car. I decided to go ahead and keep it and I've uh, been using it pretty hard. I got it, had 117,000 miles on it with 2,000 idle hours. Uh, right now it's sitting at about 129,000. Uh, maintenance, uh, repairs that I had to do on it, so tires, we covered that. I got a big power steering leak and what I found out was was causing that was the cooler hose that connects the power steering pump to the steering rack uh, had rubbed uh, in a spot. It had rubbed together and gotten a hole in the metal parts of the line. So repaired that. Uh, it was kind of a pain. I had to end up having to, to take the power steering pump off to get the angles to line up right to attach that end of it. It wasn't that bad. It just took a little while to figure it out. If I had to do it over again, I probably would go to a... This has the, a cooler line for the power steering so that when this thing's idling for hours and hours, it doesn't boil the power steering fluid. Not really necessary in civilian uses. I would probably try to see if I could put a Grand Marquis short line on it if I had to do it next time and just do away with the expense and trouble of installing that that long line. What that line does is it goes from the power steering pump here and runs all the way over to that corner underneath there and then back to the steering rack and that provides space for it to vent heat. A little hung up here. Uh, other than that, uh, when I got the car it had rough running and it had uh, code showing a Misfire on number seven cylinder. Very common, common cause. Everybody knows about it. They get water in that hole, shorts out the plug and the power pack from the leaking manifold, the exhaust intake manifold. So I thought, oh gee, it's gonna have that problem. You know, I'm gonna have to get a new manifold for it. But in the, me in the meantime, I went ahead and ordered a new power pack. Um, they ended up not using. I used the stock one. It's right there. And all I did was just clean out the water, clean the plug the plug wire out, pull the plug, uh, clean it, put it all back together. It's run fine since then. I still got the power pack that I ordered in the trunk for the spare. It's never built water up in there or leaked significantly since. I don't know why it did it. Uh, maybe when my uncle had it, he wasn't driving it far enough to, if it got a little water in it, to cook that water off from the heat, never got warm enough. I, I don't know why it got water in it then and it, it did now. It was water mixed with coolant, so there was definitely a leak there. But it hadn't done it and I put, you know, a lot of miles on it. So, I definitely, before I went and just started yanking on one of those uh, intake manifolds, clean up the problem and start driving it and see what 
if you really need to do it right then or you really need to do it at all. Um, recently, uh, I noticed a little bit of a drip and a little bit of clatter at the water pump. And within a day and not even a close to 100 miles of driving, it turned from a little tiny drip out the weep hole to just a gusher. I mean, just gushing the antifreeze out of it. So uh, we did that. And that's about what you're going to expect on these, right? This has 129,000 miles on it, uh, 2,000 idle hours. You're going to expect it about that level, so equivalent of maybe 250 to uh, 1,000 miles that all these bearings in the front of the motor are going to start going out all at the same time. So, including the alternator, although I'm not sure that's not a replacement alternator. It's pretty shiny. It should be original. Um, so, what I noticed within a day or so of doing the water pump is a little bit of chatter that I sprayed, the, uh, a little bit of chatter coming from over here. I sprayed lubricant on the idler pulley and the tensioner pulley found out that it was the tensioner pulley because when I sprayed lubricant on it, it quieted down. Now I'm going to zoom in on this tensioner pulley. I want to show you something. Even though it's not really noisy now, watch that belt wander back and forth across that pulley. Okay, that shows that that uh, bearing's out of spec in this loose. So that's got to be done next. And probably at the same time, I'll go ahead and do the idler pulley as well. Just get those out of the way. If you get one of these top cars that has a lot of mileage, you know, almost all of them are going to have a lot of idle hours. Go ahead and plan on doing those bearings and a water pump. The water pump was by far, I'm 50, Seven years old, I've been working on cars since I was 16 years old. That was by far the easiest water pump I've ever had to do on any car. It's just compared to the cars I had back in the 70s, oh, it was just incredibly easy. Or a front wheel drive car compared to any of those. It's four bolts, all the same size, boom, it comes off, no complicated gasket, goes right back on, you reuse your pulley. Uh, that was awesome. And it was only a $40 car, and I was just couldn't believe how easy that was. And these pulleys here, these two, the one that runs the uh, idler, uh, those bearings uh, are only uh, $10 a piece. So they're easy to change out and to do too. Or I may end up getting a whole new tensioner. You can get those on eBay for 30 bucks. But that tensioner seems fine. It's just the bearing. Other than that, I haven't had to do anything with this car. Still got the battery that it came with. They maintain them pretty well. You can see, even though this uh, this doesn't go with this car, cops are pretty obsessed with doing transmission flushes and coolant flushes. So a lot of that's already been done many times on these cars by the time they're surplus. Uh, it runs good, strong, fast, but smoke. Um, it jumps railroad tracks. You know, it's a lot of fun. I don't drive it hard a lot, although occasionally, you know, I do. Um, uh, these are people uh, have misconceptions of them. These are not the fastest cars in the world. My wife's got an 11 Fusion with a, just the their regular 3.0 six cylinder in it. It will smoke this car till about 75 miles an hour. And then this is going to take over. And it will run quite a bit faster than that Fusion, but it ain't quicker. That's for sure. Not even by, not even close. Uh, so they're fast cars, but they're not quick cars. It's a lot of it's a lot of Vicky to move around with that little old 200 horsepower engine there. Uh, but they're aerodynamic and, um, you know, you get them up there. I've had this one going 127, 8 miles an hour. Seemed to be just fine. Would have gone faster. Um, and close the hood on it. Well, that's about it. For the Frank and Vicky. Hey, man, what's up? You want to buy it? Uh, <laughs> it's a fun car, though. It is a fun car. Oh yeah. It has to be an old cruiser. Oh yeah. You and a passenger. That'd be, that'd be great. I like to take it out and jump railroad tracks with it. That's what's fun. Let's see. One other thing I didn't mention that I did do to it was, and you're going to do this if you get one of these. That switch panel is going to go out. Your, wind, your driver's window is going to quit working. Because they use that all the time. The cops do. So that's an, That was an $11 part or something like that. So Other than that, you know. Crown Vic cop interior, not too comfortable, but it cleans up real easy because there's no carpet. Just got that rubber mat. 
All right, well, thanks for watching. Uh, your introduction to Frank and Vicky and anything I do to it now, if I've done this, I'll uh, I'll pop up a video on it. All right, ciao.